Hi everyone, welcome into this week's My Weekly CBS Fix. I hope you had a wonderful week. I'd like to dedicate this video again as a Rafua Shalema for Yisrael. Amichai Ben Zara, may Hashem send you a speedy recovery. In this week's Parsha Parshas Truma, we learn about all the different details of the Jewish people building the house of Hashem, the Mishkan. And it's specifically the details that I want to speak to you about. There's many, many important mitzvahs in the Torah, whether it's Shabbos, whether the laws of making blessings, and so forth. And the Torah mainly gives general headlines for these mitzvahs. Certainly with Shabbos, it says it many times. It says about 25 times that we have to keep Shabbos in different ways of saying it, which teaches us different laws. But the details about keeping Shabbos are not found in the Torah. That's all relegated to the oral law. The same thing with blessings and the same thing with, with ritual slaughter or kosher food in general, other, about how to prepare everything. All that is relegated. The details about how it should be done is all relegated to the oral law. But when it comes to this mitzvah of building Hashem's home, Hashem gives all the details about how to do it. And we know that there isn't a single extra word that's in the Torah. And therefore it begs the obvious question, why is it when it came to the building of the Mishkan, was there so much information that was put into the Torah for this? How come this wasn't relegated to the oral law? And why is it all in the written law? And I think we can answer this question by connecting it to something that we learned in the first parsha of the Torah, parsha is Bereshis. And that is, in the beginning of the, wor when the beginning of Hashem is creating the world, so the verse says, And the Spirit of God hovered upon the face of the water. First Hashem created the, the heavens and the earth, and and the earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And when we think about that verse, we have to say, how is it possible that heaven and earth should be in the same sentence? The earth is something finite, and the heavens are infinite. So why would they be in the same sentence? And we've spoken before and said that the verse continues and says, and the earth was without form. And so we see that Hashem focuses right away only on earth, and the rest of the universe is just a background backdrop to the main character over here, the main actor on this scene called Earth. And so we see from Hashem that the size doesn't matter. What matters to Hashem is what's ultimately going to be important, which ultimately is human beings that were created on this Earth. Parenthetically, we learn from here that there's no such thing as any living creatures anywhere else in the universe. But so Hashem talks about the Earth for a little bit and then talks about human beings, talks about human beings, and never ceases to talk about them but Hashem stops talking about the earth because as paramount as earth is, it's nothing compared to human beings. The Torah talks about people. It moves on to the Jewish people. The Jewish people finally were taken out of Egypt. They're brought to Mount Sinai. God gives them the Torah. And then now he is ready to have his house built. And the building of Hashem's home finally brings closure to Hashem's hovering upon the face of the waters. That the entire purpose of Hashem creating the earth so that Hashem can specifically be one with us. And His being one with us is for Hashem the ultimate climactic ending to His entire creation of the earth. And to prove that to us, Hashem thereby goes into great detail to let us know exactly how the house should be made, what it should be made of, because the more details there are in the Torah, of how Hashem wants His house built, the more we see what is important to Hashem or what Hashem is focusing on. And all Hashem wants is that we should be one with Him, and that way He can be one with us. And according to how we respond, so Hashem responds. If we don't want to be close to Him, then Hashem, in a certain sense, goes away. But if we want Hashem to be with us, then Hashem wants to be with us just as much, if not even more so. And so therefore, that's what Hashem wants from us, and if we experience Hashem is with us, then we will certainly merit incredible happiness and incredible joy. Have a great Shabbos. Thank you for listening.